first panel discussion of the day, the debt conundrum for impact NBFCs, will delve into the challenges and availability of debt funding for impact NBFCs, particularly small size ones. The panel will explore what measures can be taken to enhance access to debt in this sector. The session will be moderated by Ms. Bama Balakrishnan, Chief Operating Officer of Rodhana Capital, and she will be joined by Mr. Saurabh Jauri, Executive Director and CEO of Caspian Impact Investment Advisor, Mr. Gauri Shankar, Managing Director and CEO at Manavia Development and Finance, Mr. Sudesh Chinchewari, Chief Business Officer at Vista Finance, and Mr. Mahesh Payanavar, LNDFC Business at IDFC First Bank. Thank you, panelists, for joining us today. And now I would now like to hand it over to Bama to begin today's deliberations. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Vedant. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Um, I think it's been a fantastic set of conversations till now, and we hope uh, that with the esteemed panelists we have on this one, uh, we should be able to start answering some of the questions uh, that came up in the earlier conversations as well as uh, the report itself. Uh, for the benefit of the wider audience, I think uh, we have a very interesting uh, combination of panelists uh, here. Uh, I think sort of brings the perspective of uh, looking at equity investments across uh, these sectors, companies here. Uh, I think with uh, Mr. Mahesh Painavar and uh, Mr. Gauri Shankar, we get the perspective of uh, lenders um, and in some sense also uh, borrowers in the sector and with Sudesh uh, we get a very nice ringside view of an organization a very high quality organization that's uh, seen uh, the evolution of this sector with a very nice uh, ringside view. Uh, so if I can start by requesting uh, the panelists to just give their sense of how their experience in lending to or working in the impact in BFC space, now that we all understand what we mean by that uh, term, uh, that would be great. Uh, uh, Mahesh, uh, if I can request you to maybe kick off the conversation since you've had a fairly long and wide ranging experience in working with uh, NBFCs in the sector, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, Bama. Thank you for this opportunity. I think it's a good initiative that IIC has taken up. Uh, just I think we heard a lot in the earlier session and you know it has covered most of the aspects of what is uh, you know ailing or is needed for the impact investor in impact in NBFCs. Uh, our experience has been for the last almost about seven years or eight years now um, right from capital first uh, which got merged with IDFC for bank uh, uh, sometime in 2018. Overall the experience has been really good we have had good exposure to some of the early stage NBFCs, smaller NBFCs. And uh, we believe that it's going to be a bottoms up approach that you need to give it for the economy to do well. And uh, the credit at the bottom most is something which if it is reached is something that will pay the country in the long run. So we have been in that space and our experience has been really good. I mean, to summarize, I have, I think barring whatever you know, the incidents which has been, uh, you know, recollected by Mr. Vishwanathan as well as, uh, you know, Ashish also, that the sector has seen ups and downs. Uh, despite that, the resilience has been uh, very, very strong. And uh, I believe it's going to remain strong. It's only going to strengthen uh, and in the days to come. I can absolutely echo that. Uh, if I can, you know, request uh, Mr. Gauri Shankar to build on that. Uh, perhaps also because you've looked at maybe a cross-section of the smaller entities. Uh, and even in the report, I think there's some commentary on the relative disparity in access to debt and equity for the smaller ones. But, you know, what's been your experience working with them? Thanks, Mama. <clears throat> First, thanks for the opportunity. And, uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. So uh, <clears throat> if I look at basically, I, some of you might know some for the others, basically I cook it as social investor, so it's 100% subsidy in India. In Manavia, I, we run an NBFC. And we started the, actually we are predominantly microfinance lending institutions, but from 16, 17, we started the MSME lending. Basically not directly, but we lend to the NBFCs lending to the MSME space. So basically we are a uh, impact borrower impact lender both sides basically but predominantly uh, uh, lender from that perspective from that lens i want to share that today we are lending to around 31 uh, nbfcs with a portfolio of around 500 crores so basically we are the if not first second lender to the nbfc mfi segment when they were evolving evolving, evolving. that is the same role we are playing to lending to the smaller nbfcs in the msme space so that is the development role we want to play 
And from that perspective, if I see, I think uh, uh, the segment has been uh, resilient, robust enough. And within after we starting, basically, we have seen two major challenges like ILF crisis and liquidity crisis to the uh, NBFC segment and then the pandemic. Both of them during that times, maybe uh, looking to our risk management systems are the resilience of the segment. We are fine with the, we are satisfied with the performance of the segment because we are in the smaller NBF space. I think we are facing more risks than a bank, somebody is lending to the larger uh, NBFCs. In spite of that, our experience has been that uh, it's satisfactory. I don't want to say great, but it's more of market risk. The one or two failures happen in the market for us also. So overall, I think I would like to say that the experience has satisfactory and a lot of things to do. But again, I want to share that why we are leaning at 31 institutions is that Manavia has been undertaking the ESG scorecard for the NBFCs. We brought it from MFIs to this uh, NBFC MSME segment also. Invariably, all the partners we are on board should have a minimum ESG scorecard. Uh, ICO is doing it for last 40 years and we are doing it last 17 years. Why I want to tell is that there's the budget today, but we have, so basically all of them impact NBFCs need to follow the ESG scorecard. And uh, that's the impact they are creating. That's why we support them. And uh, with all uh, risk or uh, return, we will be in that space to support the smaller NBFCs as a second, third, fourth lender so that they get up to the scale and get to the bank funding. So our experience so far, in, in spite of the pandemic also are that satisfactory with the segment. We don't have anything to complain. That's, that's very good to hear, uh, sir. Uh, Saurabh, if I can request you to come in, I think one of the uh, challenges that we have seen over the last two to three years, especially is uh, a stalling in terms of access to equity for smaller uh, NBFCs, and particularly the ones which are focused on some of these underlying sectors. Uh, so what is, you know, what would be your perspective, your experience in working with some of these entities and, you know, what do you see as some of the broader structural challenges? Yeah, no, thank you. Uh... Uh, for the question, Bama, and very pertinent question in today's environment. And as Caspian, which has been an equity investor uh, into the microfinance sector starting from 2004 and having worked very closely into the sector in terms of a uh, number of my colleagues uh, launching the funds on the equity investment side, uh, what we see uh, or saw for the microfinance sector that number of uh, industry players actually came together. So uh, as the sector over a period grew and you track it for a period of time, the performance uh, was driven by uh, increasing participation by regulator in terms of recognition of the sector uh, and recognition of the contribution by the sector, uh, lenders interest, investors participating into the sector. And uh, of course, uh, the contribution of rating agencies, uh, we have a new kind of rating agent uh, institutions uh, came up with a new kind of rating system for the sector. And uh, of course, industry bodies, uh, which uh, came up uh, and helped pull this, all these efforts together. So uh, in case of uh, impact uh, NBSCs, uh, one of our observations is that as an equity investor, we are still seeing that uh, uh, the efforts are very uh, not collective, but rather uh, from an equity investor standpoint, uh, we have only recently started seeing sector uh, as a whole as the uh, impact sector and BFC term has been coined and it is becoming more of a uh, entity by entity kind of uh, analysis rather than a sectoral uh, analysis which can then drive a combination of efforts and then multiply the efforts of one uh, entity over the other entity. So that kind of effort which happened in microfinance sector in a decade back is probably uh, not, is yet to take place in this sector, this being a sunrise sector. And hence, uh, uh, from an overall point of view, uh, for an equity investor, it becomes a very targeted decision on a particular uh, institution uh, as compared to, I uh, think uh, uh, there was a question asked earlier in the previous panel about, uh, uh, from the sir, uh, from the sir about whether SIDBI can launch a small business focus-based uh, uh, fund. And there, 
again the question was yes it can be done funds are available but uh, what is the clear definition and how uh, these sector participants are uh, interplaying and adding to each other's strength uh, but then to get into more specifics on your question Bama, the of course uh, uh, impact uh, as we look at impact nbfc's uh, they uh, continue to be small in size we talked about uh, the fact that uh, only uh, 25 NBFCs have crossed 500 crores and uh, which of course then drives the factors back to the traditional matrices of uh, the portfolio quality, uh, which in our view, the sector has shown very good resilience. We saw the uh, NPA matrices of 8.7%, uh, which is better than the other industry participants. Uh, what we also saw that uh, some of the uh, good performing institutions were obviously uh, uh, at the half of that, almost half of that. And uh, also, uh, like we say that uh, a good institution, a strong institution doesn't let a crisis go away. So a number of institutions use this opportunity to uh, expand their liability pool. Uh, there were a number of uh, schemes uh, uh, by uh, the regulator by government and well supported uh, by uh, SIDBI and NABARD, which uh, in terms of TLTRO, PCG, refinance. Uh, so the institutions were able to expand uh, the liability profile and use this as an opportunity to expand the liability profile on the balance sheet, uh, which again uh, led to a certain uh, uh, level of confidence as uh, the institutions are looking at the balance sheets now. Uh, in terms of uh, the equity investments, while there are a lot of VC investments going into India right now, this year 2021 has been uh, really phenomenal in terms of the growth of the equity investments. But I think there's still among the equity investors a little bit of hesitation uh, given uh, the portfolio quality uh, concerns people are just waiting for some aging of the portfolio to happen and uh, of course good institutions are continuing to get uh, uh, raise equity uh, but at the same time there are becoming more institution specific decisions as compared to a sectoral uh, kind of decisions so i'll pause here uh, but these are my initial views no, very, very, very interesting and maybe, you know, good point to bring in uh, Sudesh. Uh, I think Sudesh, having had the privilege of partnering with uh, Vistar over a decade plus now, we have a fair sense of what your journey was like. Uh, but what is your view of how do you think the journey is like for a smaller NBFC today that's, you know, setting out maybe to create new markets like you did? Uh, you know, do you think the challenges are similar, different? Uh, what do you see has changed? And, uh, you know, how have things changed for you over the last few years uh, as well, just in the context of being a larger institution with a track record, uh, but you still see some market gaps? Yeah. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, let me start uh, with thanking uh, IIC for inviting Vistar for this conclave. And when uh, I saw the topic for the discussion, it talks about debt conundrum for impact NBFCs. And my first step was to go to Google and check uh, what Google says about conundrum, right? And it says it is a difficult and confusing situation, right? Has that situation changed for NBFCs? Now, debatable, and that's why we are here. Uh, and our opinion is uh, the difficulty level still persists. Uh, confusion still prevails for NBFCs. Uh, is it changing? Yes, it is changing uh, at a pace which uh, we may not like, uh, but yes, the, it's changing. Right? So what has changed in our ecosystem? Now let me uh, uh, split the ecosystem into two parts. One is the uh, investment part and second is the regulatory side. Now on the investment part, that is on the debt markets specifically to talk about, a uh, lot of things are evolving and have evolved. A uh, lot of positive things have come in, uh, which I'm sure uh, definitely will help impact NBFCs, the smaller one especially. Co-lending uh, is not a new thing. It was there uh, for some time and we saw the uh, guidance from RBA some years back, uh, but nobody was latching onto it. Uh, one of the primary reason was the technology, 
right? How do we handle technology? Because smaller NPFs is uh, uh, infrastructure and the partners uh, infrastructure uh, did not talk to each other and there are a lot of difficulties, which I think is now solved by uh, the uh, players like Nadarnark, where we now kind of see plug and play uh, platforms uh, which can integrate uh, the different systems, right? So co-lending is fast catching up now. That is one big evolution, I would say, in this space. Uh, on the instrument side, a lot of uh, innovation has happened, all right? Uh, I uh, remember uh, the multi-originator uh, uh, structure, then we have guarantee back structures. Lot of things are continuously uh, being innovated and uh, evolved and smaller NPFs are definitely getting uh, benefited with this, all right? Uh, so lot of things have happened. Offshore lending, uh, even to smaller NPFs, I see some good traction and uh, those are the days when we used to raise uh, from offshore was uh, very difficult because you have to really hunt for those names and now with a lot of high caliber intermediaries uh, being very active in the market uh, uh, we see that as a very good opportunity for the uh, smaller nbfcs or let's say impact nbfcs to access that uh, debt market uh, relatively easier so that is one good development i would say while domestic investors especially in the uh, uh, debt term loan so I uh, had to still catch up understanding impact and BFCs and I'm sure uh, that will uh, soon happen. On the regulatory side, uh, yes, much is desired uh, while uh, some steps are being taken uh, uh, by uh, government, by RBI, uh, like we heard earlier, the common uh, approach by uh, RBI and government is very, very essential. Uh, I think that is something will really help the uh, sector uh, that is impact NBFCs. Uh, things like Uday Madhar uh, number, I think that is one uh, very good initiative which is taken. Uh, took some uh, time for NBFCs to adopt, uh, customers to adopt, but I think now it is a uh, seamless process which is happening. Uh, I am sure we need to build on this Aadhaar platform, Uday Madhar platform uh, much, much uh, faster, uh, which should uh, you know, help in uh, lending easy to the MSME or rather the impact uh, uh, segment of the uh, economy. So I think a uh, lot of evolution is happening, changes are happening and what is need of the hour is the concept or a class of NBFCs called impact NBFCs to be officially recognized by the uh, regulators and government and everything should be built around uh, that. Uh, I think that will uh, bring synergy of various stakeholders and channelize everybody's uh, uh, you know investment towards that that will uh, definitely i'm sure will uh, make a big difference to this segment thanks a lot uh, sudesh thank you for that um, i think if we were to kind of rewind for uh, you know what was happening in the market over the last uh, couple of years uh, i think some of the speakers spoke about the difference in risk perception of the underlying segments which are served by uh, you know the impact mdfcs i think the two waves of the covid pandemic the two severe waves uh, in particular have in a sense disproportionately increased the risk perception of these underlying customers uh, and this you know as we just saw is perhaps uh, maybe uh, not warranted uh, given what we've seen in terms of the resilience of these institutions and perhaps the kind of portfolio performance on a risk adjusted basis that uh, they have been able to deliver, uh, given the kind of localized business models they have, the digital approaches that they may have had, um, and their, you know, hopefully better understanding of the customer segments that uh, they are serving as well. Um, so the question then in this context, uh, uh, maybe I can start by asking uh, uh, Mahesh, uh, since you look at a lot of these entities, is what more should really be done by market participants? So if we look at industry bodies, uh, the NBFCs themselves individually, collectively, equity investors who have a deeper view of these sectors and so on, uh, what more do you think can be uh, done or what should be done in a more organized manner to communicate this, uh, the, you know, what this characteristics better? Yeah, Baba, you put it very rightly that it is last two rounds of COVID which actually impacted the perception or risk perception of the NBFCs. We ourselves uh, have been lending to smaller NBFCs all along. We are, we were also kind of concerned. 
but i would put it this way that it is you can't blame anybody for this perception because at the first instance and thereafter the second instance it was more of a reaction and it was a natural uh, you know human logical reaction that one would perceive in terms of uh, you know uh, the covid lockdown business economies I mean, business shuts uh, so the collection would have its own challenges so it was natural reaction i wouldn't say which got into a perception of situation naturally as a next subsequent act. but i think uh, things are improving and all of us are seeing the improvement on the ground both in terms of collections and the old overdues getting paid though in parts and pieces but nevertheless they have come back so to the extent that the economy is coming back to on track i think we should see these risk perception getting naturally corrected to a fair amount now coming to what can be done i think it it requires a uh, it requires equity and debt both as we all know and why rightly put in the report that was shared uh, there are a couple of things which i think can be done we ourselves have been supporter of this wallet and bfc by way of giving them its quasi equity that is subordinated debt that we have funded a lot of companies but that was in the past but as a bank we can't do it uh, anymore but as a nbfc ourselves capital pulse we believed in supporting them by way of a long term subordinated debt which is one area which can be looked at in the absence of pure equity which may not be available for some more time is my belief could be after some time it could be more forthcoming so sub debt cannot be easily available from a set of investors so i think uh, something like a aif structure which i think your your company and a few others have started collecting uh, you know ai of fund and putting into subordinated debt or long term uh, equity kind of a structure will support these nbfcs for a longer period to come back on the uh, on the track other than that i think uh, it, it, the various sros like cii and uh, their own you know you have mfin who have done a fair bit to organize these small players into a channeled uh, body to be heard by the regulators and thankfully rbi has done a lot so as cb and other institutions you know channeling directed credit support to these players by way of credit guarantee etc i think the action required for the uh, or the reaction required for the uh, covid has been very clearly seen i think it will speak up in some more time but as as a as things evolve and we have all heard the technology digitization etc will only improve the efficiency of uh, the system and the mis uh, to closely monitor the performance of the underlying nbfc then nbfc in turn monitoring their own portfolio so given this situation it is it is i think i'm looking at a very positive outcome of all this technology government driven initiatives uh, udya madar uh, they are all you know all in the direction of maybe formalizing the informal lending that was happening i wouldn't say informal informal but nevertheless scattered lending by the nbfc so it will get channelized into a a structured format where the information will be available uh, more easily and all is uh, you know everything is function of the underlying borrowers paying you back in time which i think has started uh, coming back to in in some or the other form you know coming back to normalcy though not into the full swing but i do expect a lot of recovery uh, whatever you know expected credit loss of 3 4% that we had initially estimated is 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 down from 7 or 8 which was there in the second covid wave so i think uh, it's a good sign for for the entire credit uh, sector as a whole a small credit i would put no absolutely i think i would uh, agree with your comments i think uh, one of the insights uh, we've had when we looked at uh, data in terms of performance of some of the underlying portfolios on the back of significant risk events uh, such as the covid pandemic and previously uh, events such as demonetization uh i think there is always a gap in terms of what you see as trends reflected in say npa numbers versus what you see as uh, performance by way of collection efficiency and being able to differentiate that look at recovery rates um and start readjusting estimates in terms of the expected asset quality of uh, the institutions and uh, recalibrating you know what you see as the risk outlook for these sectors i think uh there is a very valuable role um i think definitely the nbfcs themselves possibly commentary from rating agencies which look at data closer and uh, perhaps institutions such as northern arc and others can certainly help uh and maybe reset how we think about evaluating some of these institutions and the underlying segments uh with that uh, i think uh, mr gorishankar if i can request you to comment on one aspect i think 
in earlier uh, comments we heard um, and you know we have much to thank i think the regulators and the government for the kind of recognition of the role nbfcs are playing in the economy and the kind of uh, i think uh, uh, announcements that were made to channel liquidity uh, to the nbfcs and uh, you know of course it was the first time that we saw systemic effort towards that uh, but your sense of you know how much of that should really continue in steady state uh, so we are not just responding in a crisis, but we are nurturing and scaling these institutions to facilitate the flow of credit. Uh, that perspective would be very useful. Thanks, Mama. I think uh, <clears throat> I think I completely agree with you that the regulatory response or government response during the pandemic is one of the fastest of the 25 years I've seen whenever the issues are happening. Uh, just to be uh, mindful, I think the first circular from RBA came in the first or second week of April 2020 when we started the lockdown. So that was so prompt, so fast, so quick. I think that has been very helpful, not only RBA government and the other stakeholders also. For example, I when I speak to uh, the DLTRO, the partial guarantees, the liquidity support through these type of instruments, and the agencies playing a role in that one, like SIDB and NABARD, I think some of the NBFCs uh, told me that the speed at which we also actually cleared the uh, loans was so fast. Actually, so I feel that it's a systematic response to a very big pandemic and really helped the NBFCs and most of these segments very well. So I, I, I appreciate that and I thank all these players who have done a great job during that time. And actually that reflected in my NBFC portfolio also. Really, we are very worried about the repayment capacity of the NBFCs during this pandemic almost four or five months. But with some liquidity support, with some recoveries, I think it started coming up. And the point I want to make is that in May, June 2020, when we are almost in the midst of the still pandemic uncertainty future and all those things, one of my partners told that whenever the lockdown is over, I want to give a small loans to my clients to kickstart his micro enterprise. I was worried that why are you doing this one? Because we don't know how the future is looking like, what's happening. He told me, if I don't do this one, the small enterprise will not survive. Basically, he's already in negative cash flows. So that tells me that you know, it made me think that, okay, this is the way I have to look at the industry also. And we are in the market from, say, July, August onwards to lend from 2020. So I feel that the liquidity support that came from government to the industry and then onwards to the micro lending has helped really revive out of this one. So there is a lot to learn from this one, Bama, as you mentioned, whether it is a... Uh, um, guarantees are TLTRO. Something continuing is really helpful, but somehow with the Vishwanath and this, I have heard in the morning, but I think there is a, I don't want to say reluctance, maybe the complexity of completing those type of things, recognizing the segment as a separate segment for regulation support, all those things might be difficult from the regulatory perspective, but I strongly recommend and I feel that this segment is really touching the bottom of the pyramid and I learned from two close onwards. So I really see this type of the NBFCs and some of the systems, like Mr. Raman mentioned, about trade guarantee for the NBFCs, those type of things, in, can, we can bring it at least to some extent. We cannot compare a 10 crore, 100 crore NBFC versus 1,000 crore NBFC. Whatever we can do up to scale for them to go beyond a 100 crore, then, of course, they can stand on their own. I think I strongly recommend and feel that as a body, if we can see to it that some of these steps stay back in the market for the smaller NBFCs, um, uh, that will be very helpful. Uh, we are ready to play any role that with uh, uh, SIDB or you, Bama, because you are the leadership role in this uh, uh, taking or whatever we can do, because we want to support the smaller impact in BFCs. The, while we want to support all those things, the first risk that I look forward to at this point of time is that the bank lending to NBFCs, lending to SMEs as a priority sector lending is going to be seized, basically uh, seized almost by 31st March 2022 as per the PSL circular. So that could actually, unless uh, there is a different view is taken and that's extended, it has been extended for last two years. And unless it is extended, I'm also already a bit concerned that whether that can create a refinance risk for the smaller NBFCs because at a stage of 1500 crore and 450 crores of capital, if I go to a bank for borrowing, the banks ask me, does it come under PSL? So banks are really keen on PSL lending. And if I am at this stage, A rating and all those things, if I can't attract a bank borrowing, then an NBFC, a small 100, 200 crore NBFC without PSL tag because of the new, new change, if they don't do, can actually may, uh, disincentivize banks to lend to that segment. So I think that is a bigger challenge to address so that it continues because the pandemic is over, but impact is still there. 
some of the restructuring we have done hasn't completely come back in the SME segment. From that perspective, that continuation of that PSL tag for NB, online by banks to NBFCs is a big step in that direction. So I feel that, uh, yes, of course, something can be done like partial guarantees and all those things, but at least continuing this for some more time is a big benefit for this segment. And we have to do something in that space. I want to stop. This. Thank you. And uh, thank you for highlighting that point. I think uh, I understand uh, there have been representations made to the regulator as well. And I completely echo your point on uh, the criticality that, you know, that provision, uh, the role that that provision has played in enabling the flow of credit uh, to the segment and specifically for targeted segments such as the MSME and uh, customer. Um, I think in the interest of time, I'm going to pick up one last uh, question um, and, you know, try to uh, get feedback from uh, Sudesh and then Saurabh. Uh, since the topic is the debt conundrum for NBFCs, Sudesh, would be great to hear your views on how do you see small and mid-sized NBFCs? How should they be thinking about the capital structure, the debt capital structure? What kind of products have worked um, at different points in time, um, you know, through the, uh, I would say the, the life cycle? Um, and how do you see NBFC should structure this uh, at this point in time? Yeah. So <clears throat> very important uh, things uh, for the entity, any entity is to instill confidence in the stakeholders, right? And, and I will not dwell too deeper into that. Uh, uh, we should prove uh, that our business model is sustainable, right? Uh, more importantly, for any stakeholder engagement, we need to instill confidence through our uh, transparency, through our, uh, you know, accurate reporting and also timely reporting. I think these are some of the very basic uh, uh, cornerstones every NBFC uh, should maintain uh, from time to time. And that has in, indeed helped us uh, a great way uh, uh, for, in tapping various sources. Now coming to the sources, yes, there are uh, uh, plain vanilla term loans, then there are securitization products, uh, you have uh, different bond market products, right? Uh, for any NBFC, I think we should not be too worried about the having optimal mix in the beginning because it is the need which drives and there are different providers, right? Offshore lenders, uh, then there are domestic uh, bond market players, uh, there are many other uh, large NBFCs who can provide debt. So start working with uh, these uh, players who understand uh, the small NBFCs better and are willing to partner, right? Uh, that is very important. That starts building confidence into the larger players. And that is what exactly we did at Vistar. Uh, in fact, our initial borrowings were from very small banks as well as largely NBFCs. And making them speak about uh, uh, our company is very important in the market. Uh, which is uh, through your active engagement right uh, having also very active engagement with rating agencies is very important uh, like we typically in first week of april soon after our financial year and actively engage with them and start our presentation with the bad news for them right and then talk about our performance now these are some of the things which we should uh, do uh, repeatedly and engage with all, all kinds of stakeholders whether they are actively supporting you or not they could be a future uh, uh, supporters like many of the deals or uh, partners we could onboard after nine ten years of active engagement right uh, the patience is very important in this market uh, so start with uh, the players who are very active in this market and slowly build uh, and my uh, personal experience is uh, let us not to get first about uh, what is the optimal capital structure for us and all uh, uh, start growing because you need growth capital right that capital uh, and the partners will help you to tap other, uh, you know, uh, uh, sources as well. So that's what I would summarize, uh, Bama. Very, very uh, relevant, uh, Sudesh. Couldn't uh, agree with you more. And I think, you know, your reference to the role of offshore impact capital, um, if you know, and and that also takes time. And investing behind that effort and uh, being, you know, bringing them in as part of the cap structure is very useful. And word of mouth, I think what you mentioned is extremely relevant. Uh, Saurabh, if I can request you to talk about what you see as the uh, possible tools and where should, you know, market participants be investing to create these uh, tools, debt tools for these NBFCs? Yeah, so uh, while I completely agree with the practitioner approach of Sudesh that 
all of us have done fundraising in the way uh, let's do the way it comes and gets converted uh, at the same time i think uh, most of the smaller nbfcs have uh, too much reliance on term loans uh, mostly with banks non banks and uh, co lending uh, bc arrangements uh, we at one time uh, before the crisis we were quite hopeful about the deepening of the cp market debentures market but unfortunately uh, market participants have moved away from that and for a smaller nbfc it has become harder to participate uh, in that market so uh, possibly looking at some kind of uh, uh, guarantee structures uh, by the market participants uh, uh, would be useful for smaller nbfcs to have access to that pool of capital uh, we also saw uh again uh, like mr gauri mentioned the uh, very timely action by the regulator in providing uh, uh, various instruments uh, some of those instruments uh, can be considered uh, by regulator uh, to keep as a permanent uh, nature because our view is that uh, all the beneficiaries of tltr or 2.0 were actually very deserving uh, beneficiaries and uh, it the scheme really helped uh, uh the pcg scheme refinance scheme really help the participants so some of these can be considered on a more permanent uh, basis uh, we also saw uh, recently in the uh, securitization uh, uh, circular that uh, the uh, refinance the securitization of underlying asset uh, of uh, lending institutions or bullet loans uh, uh, were not allowed uh, while we understand the regulator view of increased enhanced riskiness uh, on these assets but at the same time our request would be to consider uh, a market based mechanism in terms of uh, risk mitigation as compared to uh, uh, just disallowing uh, from a regulatory standpoint uh, so which will help uh, deepen the liquidity pool for the various participants as they grow further in their balance sheet and size and will be able to access Uh, more of these instruments uh but uh, i think uh, overall the situation is improving and uh, as uh, the participants uh, also need to consider the fact that uh, while going back uh, the issue primary issue was access to financing but uh, we are i think everybody is getting ready for an interest rate increase and going forward actually the challenges will be more on the nim compression as uh, we would uh, the question is only when uh, and not really whether the fact it will happen and uh, hence uh, uh, some of those uh, relaxations on securitization deepening pool on refinance uh, will help the institutions as uh, uh, in the next uh, couple of years we would see hardening of interest rate and further squeeze uh, on the name of the various mar- market participation market participants so i think these are some of the uh, actions which uh, will be helpful thank you thank you sorup so i'm going to quickly answer i think one of the questions in the chat box um, i think when we speak to investors there is a significant interest in looking at um, i think over the last few months it's been focused more on secured underlying assets just given the uncertainty of asset quality post the pandemic uh but i think in a sign of optimism and improving recovery as uh, you know i think mahesh pointed out uh we've seen traction on appetite for unsecured business loan portfolios um as well as you know microfinance portfolios which are again of course unsecured uh picking up significantly in the fourth quarter albeit with you know more uh, protection in terms of higher levels of uh, credit announcement we've also seen appetite for direct assignment transactions which of course do not have any credit protection coming in while there is incentive alignment uh, which is built in for specifically school infra and renewables uh, i think the school financing sector has possibly gone through the i would say the most difficult times but again uh, signs of i think green shoots now that you know schools have reopened we've actually seen uh, improvement in terms of the underlying collection efficiency performance of this segment we work very closely with a few nbfcs in the sector specialists who are deeply committed and engaged uh, with the sector and we have you know i would say room for optimism there um, hopefully as that comes in and 
pre-pandemic, I can tell you that this was one of the best performing underlying segments. So we're quite hopeful to see that, you know, recovery come through as well. Renewables at this point is a fairly small segment. So, you know, it's not really possible to kind of look at bundling and selling down yet. Uh, maybe as the EV financing segment expands, uh, we will see those opportunities come in. We've onboarded a few NBFCs in the segment, but I would say it's still uh, probably a segment that we'll have to watch as it evolves. I'm not referring to the larger project financing opportunities, but specifically looking at small ticket portfolio financing transactions. Um, I think just one comment on the blended finance tools. Uh, I think what we've really seen as a gap in the sector, and I think Mr. Raman referred to this briefly in his comments, is who, um, you know, among the market participants or investor segment has the conviction to put out capital and provide uh, some level of credit announcement, first loss, second loss kind of support for other investors to come. Participants, including us and others, have been doing that. Um, I think we're seeing, uh, you know, entities such as SIDBI and a few others stepping in, uh, but there is still a lot to be done there, and that could also trigger the flow of debt capital to the segment uh, overall. So with that, I'm going to close. Thank you very much to the panelists for uh, your comments, extremely insightful. Uh,